Let's look at the hydrolysis of phosphomonoesters in a little more detail. Recall that the dominant ionization state of a phosphomonoester is the monoanionic form, the form with an overall charge of negative one. In looking at hydrolysis reactions in solution with just the phosphomonoester, say, dissolved in water, what we find experimentally is that phosphomonoesters hydrolyze more rapidly than the corresponding diesters. The reason for this mechanistically has to do with the fact that the monoester retains a hydroxyl group, and this is a group that can play a key role as an intramolecular general acid during the hydrolysis process. Before we get into the mechanism, let's look at the overall transformation. Here we find phosphorus connected to an alkoxy group. This is a phosphomonoester, and what's apparent if we look at the fate of the alkoxy group on the product side is that the OR group in the starting material is acting as a leaving group, or nucleophage. This is a nucleophilic substitution process, as are essentially all hydrolysis. Water, more specifically the oxygen in H2O, is playing the role of nucleophile in this reaction. And phosphorus in the phosphomonoester is acting as electrophile, the atom that accepts a pair of electrons from the nucleophile. Given that we've identified this reaction as a nucleophilic substitution, it's no surprise that SN2 figures prominently into its mechanism. And just to keep things short and relatively simple, I wanted to consider this mechanism occurring through general catalysis. This may not be how it occurs in practice, but it keeps the mechanism fairly short and gets the most important aspects of this reaction across. Recall that in any catalyzed reaction, the role of a base is to activate the nucleophile by deprotonating it. The hydrolysis of phosphomonoesters is no exception. The general base kicks off electron flow by deprotonating water, which is acting as the nucleophile. This facilitates the addition of the oxygen of the water to the electrophilic phosphorus atom. And this is a pattern of electron flow that we'll see in a wide variety of biochemical hydrolysis reactions with a base activating water through deprotonation, encouraging the formation of a bond from water's oxygen. What makes the hydrolysis of phosphomonoesters unique is what happens next. An SN2 step takes place, which seems to imply that we should just kick off OR- as a leaving group. But the phosphomonoester retains an intramolecular general acid in this hydroxyl group. And as the PO bond breaks, oxygen can pick up that proton so that we avoid the formation of an anionic oxygen except at phosphorus where it's very well stabilized. On the whole, this is general acid and general base catalyzed SN2, and it leads directly to the products of the hydrolysis reaction, which I'll just draw again. We now have an O- minus where the OH was before. We have the O- minus that was present in the original phosphomonoester. We have the PO double bond, and now we have a new OH group linked to the phosphorus, which came from water. The other byproduct of this reaction is the alcohol, HOR, of the alkoxy group that was present in the original phosphomonoester. And as far as rate acceleration is concerned, it's really this intramolecular general acid that we see right here that makes phosphomonoesters much more susceptible to hydrolysis than diesters. You can think of this as one of the driving forces behind the polymerization of nucleic acids. Polymerization results in stabilization, since the diester form with an OR group here is less susceptible to hydrolysis than the monoester form. Phosphodiesters, on the other hand, react much more slowly in hydrolysis reactions. So notice here again, the basic reaction type is the same as in the case of phosphomonoesters. What we're doing is replacing a leaving group, the OR group, with a nucleophile, the OH group from water. This process happens much more slowly than the hydrolysis of phosphomonoesters because now we have another alkoxy group here which is incapable of acting as a general acid. No intramolecular assistance by a general acid is possible in a phosphodiester. The mechanism here actually changes pretty profoundly from an SN2 type process to one involving addition to the PO double bond followed by elimination. So let's take a brief look at that. The mechanism starts with the addition of water to phosphorus in an ADN type elementary step where we put negative charge on the doubly bound oxygen in the starting material. A proton transfer then occurs, likely not intramolecular, but I'll draw it that way anyway just to save us a little bit of time. And this leads to an intermediate in which we're poised to kick off the alcohol as a good leaving group. 
with a positively charged oxygen connected to H and an R group. Beta elimination kicks off the alcohol and generates the products, which we see right here. This mechanism helps us see pretty clearly why the hydrolysis of phosphodiesters is relatively slow. Even in the presence of a catalyst, of say a basic catalyst, to deprotonate water, we're still going to end up with negative charge on oxygen in this intermediate, which is completely avoided in the hydrolysis of phosphomonoesters. And that's a problem. In this uncatalyzed process, we see both negative charges and positive charges in the same molecule, and that is kinetically a big problem and it's going to suggest a high activation energy. The activation energy for hydrolysis of phosphodiesters is so high that it imparts an amazing stability to deoxyribonucleic acid. The half-life of hydrolysis of DNA, whose backbone consists of phosphodiesters, has been estimated to be 80 million. That's 8 times 10 to the 7th years. That's staggering. That means that we can still find DNA of the dinosaurs that has not yet decayed through hydrolysis.